Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and today we're going to talk about taking dents out of brass snare drums. It's something I've done for a long time. I learned this from a fellow who used to work at Drummer's World in New York. His name was Jack. He was an elderly gentleman, and uh, he fixed all kinds of drums there. And when I was a kid, I had some um, uh, drums uh, that I had gotten. One was a um, Rogers Dynasonic that had a few dents and once I asked him can I take those out and he, he was very knowledgeable and he gave me some good ideas so today I'm going to share those with you I've been using them for years there's a couple different ways to do it so you'll have some options uh, and I will explain the ways that I do it so uh, as a patient we have this Swingerland uh, brass chrome over brass Gene Krupa Sound King from the 1960s or maybe early 70s and um, it's, a, it's a good drum. Uh, I've done videos on this particular kind of drum. I have many of these. And I think I have four or five of them at this point. And I, I rent them out. I let students use them sometimes. I use them myself. It's a really solid sounding snare drum. And, you know, I, like I said, I've done a video or two on this drum. You can look up and I'll reference it in the description. Anyway, this particular drum, when I got it, uh, I got it very inexpensively and it had a cave in uh, you can see it here I'll go with the close camera to see if I can give you this and what happened is the strainer someone over tightened it most likely and that brass is so soft it just caved right in and, and then when you try to tighten that strainer with the head on, I took the head off. I'll show you the inside in a minute. Uh, the strainer does not work, it does not function because it hits the rim. I'll show you the inside. So that's what the inside looks like. I've already taken the bolt off of there and it is definitely caved in. These drums would dent a lot. Uh, what would happen with them uh, would be people would put them on their sides like this and then where the lugs are, they would cave in. Very, very soft brass, but it does sound great. So today what I'm going to do is strip all the hardware off this drum and show you a couple different ways of taking these dents out. And let's see if this drum has any other dents. If it has a small one, we can take that out too. I'm not sure if it does, but we'll look later. Small dents are really easy to get out. These big ones are tough. And you've got to be really careful when you do it. Now sometimes what happens is uh, because when this brass was dented, it actually, it compresses, so it gets longer, um, you know, this way out and shorter in, if that makes any sense. So when you push it out, the chrome can crack, uh, so you got to do it very, very carefully. Now you can, some people try to freeze it, some people try, you know, shoot it with cold, comp like compressed air, cryo. <laughs> And then other folks heat it with a heat gun. I don't do any of that. All right. I've tried it and I always have bad results. But I have done this on a lot of drums, what I'm going to show you today, and I've had very good results. So we'll put this down for a second. Now, uh, this drum is really easy to strip. So what I'm going to do, like I said, is take all of the hardware off. Now, let me explain what the other steps we're going to talk about today. You see this old floor tom here this is an old stewart drum not sure if you're familiar with these these were made in japan way back in the day the 60s they're basically uh really crappy drums so i i bought a whole set of these and what i do is i cut these up and i use them to repair dents okay mostly in all sizes of snare drums so today we're going to cut this one down the middle and make two templates one for a five inch drum which is what the slingerland is the other one for a six and a half inch drum so we'll cut it right there on a table saw and i'll take you into the shop show you how i do that the other thing we'll do today instead of using my templates we will make a template uh template uh, out of a two by four which will be curved which when we hammer this out will sit on this part of the drum and will go from the inside and that way it can't get too far out 
back out the dent. Now there's two ways to do this and I'll go over here so you can see my face. You can use clamps to do this. So in other words, once you get that block on there and then a block on this side too, you can use a clamp to get it back to where it's supposed to be. That's the way I prefer to do it. The other way to do it is put it inside this floor tom once we get the hardware off and actually take a, a small sandwich bag, fill it with sand, put it where the dent is and try to beat out the dent that way. What happens is this serves as a backdrop uh, so you know it's got something to hammer against and the sand cushions the blow and make sure it's even with the big dent. That's the other way you can take these dents out. So there's a few ways to do it. Uh, the guys who repair brass instruments uh, for a living, they're really knowledgeable about this and I've spoken to some of them about this. Problem is those instruments, that brass is very thin and very soft so they're not used to using you know their methods on a heavier shell that's much thicker like this although these sonar shells are thin. If you're doing it on a Black Beauty you need to be really careful. Those are much tougher than these shells. You can really make things a lot worse. I have done Black Beauties with the sand method and it has worked pretty well. Uh, like bl old Black Beauties, old Leedies that are um, nickel over brass. I, I have a few of those. So what we'll do is we're going to we're going to strip this down first, I'll, then I'll show you the shell, and then we'll go into the shop, I'll make a template out of a template out of a 2 by 4 We'll cut that. Uh, and what you want to do to make that is you'll take the drum. You can even use a cymbal if you want. You'll turn it over and you'll trace the outline on that 2 by 4 A 14-inch hi-hat cymbal works well too. Anything that follows the uh, the circumference of the of the drum works really well. All right, so uh, we will strip this drum and we'll be back. So uh, I wanted to show you a few things before we proceed here. I have taken both heads off and the snares on this drum. I wanted to show you the dent a little closer now before I proceed. You can see it there. It's pretty bad. It's worse than I thought actually. So that's going to be a tough one to fix. And it goes right into the snare bed too. So this will be a challenge. Uh, now this is, uh, I took out another one of my Sound Kings. So this one is a later one, probably from the 70s. It's got the silver badge. So that serial number is 2829. I don't know, my eyes aren't so good anymore, but you'll be able to read it with this. I think it's 280975 maybe. It's like an eye exam. And this one is the gold badge. And that's 91. I think that's an 899. And this one's probably from the 60s. The other interesting thing is when we turn this over, we'll get a little snare sound. The way that they attach the lugs changed. So you can see that. And on here, the 60s drum, it's with these plates, which maybe helped it to keep it from denting. I don't know. Because these, uh, this one's not dented where the lugs are. But it's clear to me now how this got damaged. Whoever had it had tightened this strainer so much that it pushed in the drum. I don't think it was dropped. Anyway, if you ever want to see the inside of a Zoomatic strainer, that's what it looks like. Now we talked about in my Slingerland Sound King video about these knobs that they fall off and I, I have replaced them with the little bass drum beater weights. I'm going to turn this drum back over so the snares stop ringing. And the other thing about the older Zoomatic is it didn't have the, the ribbon attachment, just had the two holes. Now this could all be wrong, and the Slingerland expert might be able to say, that's wrong, you got the drums backwards, which is possible. But either way, I'm going to take the dents out. <laughs> and this strainer, as always, uh, the rubber washer here 
in between there, if there ever was one, is gone now. And when this knob falls off, they all do usually, what you can do is take some plumbing tape, wrap it around the threads, and use a rubber mallet gently to get this back on there, and it'll usually stay. It's hard to glue it. You can use some Gen Weld to try it, but it's very difficult. So, anyway, that's the strainer. This one's in good shape. A lot of these can be replaced with a more modern strainer. All right, so I just wanted to show you the dent up close and then show you the differences between the vintages of these different drums. And we'll be back. Okay, so the shell is stripped. We'll clean it up later. And what I'm going to do now is show you one of the ways to do this. So you just get a 2x4, spruce is fine. Um, hardwood would be better, you know, like oak, and, but I don't have an oak 2x4 lying around. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you the different ways to do this, like I said. And just take the drum, and you can also do this with a 14-inch cymbal. And you're going to put it on the wood, and then you're going to trace a line like that. Okay? And that's going to follow the, the circumference of the drum, in other words, around it. The other way to do it is flat like this. And that, take, that will do a bigger dent, and you'll do the same thing. So we're going to make two out of this one. So that's what that'll look like. See it? And that's a, that's actually a little close. We're gonna, we're gonna go a little farther out with that band saw. It's a little tricky to cut this. That'll work. The other thing I'm gonna do now is go to the shop. When I cut this, is I'm gonna cut this drum in half on the table saw, and so we'll be able to drop this in there, and put that sand in there. Okay, that's the whole idea of this. So if you have a drum you can sacrifice, that's a, that's a good thing. So we're going to go into the shop and we'll start working on this cutting. Alright, so we're in the shop and the trick is to back the fence all the way off on the bandsaw. So you can actually follow the line on the wood. We're going to do the flat side first. And that's what we got. Perfectly flat. It's really the best tool for this. Don't try to use a jigsaw. I'll hit it with the sander a little bit. This will work great. And that will concur with the 14 inch drum. All right. Now we'll do the, um, the other way, just in case we decide we want to, um, to have it both ways. So we'll do that. Now this is much trickier on the bandsaw because you're cutting a lot more wood and you have to cut it the opposite way so it's a little more dangerous. So we'll give this a shot. And we're going to cut the inner circle.
So you hear that resistance, right? That's a lot of wood we're cutting. So I'm going to touch this up just a little. It came out pretty good. Probably fine, but I'm just going to touch it up just a hair here. Great. All right, so I got two choices. I'll probably most likely use this one and just do the dent slowly, but we'll see. We'll see how well this, this fits after I sand it a bit. Okay, now we're going to go over to the table saw and cut that drum. And uh, so we have something uh, when we use the sand method to, uh, to beat on. So here we are at the table saw, and what I'm going to do is slice this drum in half. Now, to do this safely, obviously, you have to take off the blade guard, which I'm going to do in a second. Okay? So, always practice safety when you're using a table saw. This thing causes the most injuries in woodworking. It's extremely dangerous. And what we're going to do once we have that blade guard off is put the drum against the fence and avoid the badge, which we're not going to take off. You could get that off, but it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to put it there against that and then rotate it slowly. And that's going to cut it. So this is pretty tricky. Don't try it at home unless you're used to using these kinds of tools. It can be extremely dangerous. The other thing I'm going to do here is change this blade. Right now I have a ripping blade. I was ripping a bunch of persimmon. And I'm going to change this to a very fine blade so it doesn't splinter. So I just wanted to show you the... the um, tool that I'm using to cut this, uh, you know, th this is the best way to do it so everything's flat. Okay, we'll be back. So I wanted to show you the difference of these, uh, difference between these two blades if you do any cutting of drums, which I do uh, from time to time. Uh, this is a ripping blade. You see the uh, few number of teeth, very cheap blade. Not the brand, the brand is okay, but just the way it, it cuts. You don't want to use this on for cutting a drum. Now this is the blade I normally use. It's an 80 tooth Freud um, Diablo. It's a good blade. Remember the, the cutters always should face towards you. Okay, it's be pretty obvious when you start cutting and nothing happens but, but fire. So uh, just remember to install the blade that way. And we're going to put this on here real quick. And then I'm going to cut this thing and show you exactly how I do it and again you know if you're not used to doing this stuff please uh, go to someone who, who does because bad things can happen All right, and the next thing we're going to do is remove the blade guard unfortunately you have to do this when you're cutting the drum or else it won't it will push all the way through, so that is a must. Well, this old saw, it's pretty difficult to get off. Most of the new, new ones, this is a very old DeWalt saw, probably 30 years old at least. At this point. All right, and then always put the insert back in. So what we'll do is we'll measure from the fence, because you're going to ride up against the fence, right to to the blade and you're going to measure to the inside of the blade if you want it exactly six and a half which is what I recommend for a six and a half drum and we're going to make two templates today one for fives and one for six and a half All right, get rid of this now always 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 wear eye protection and dust protection and hand protection, although the gloves don't do that much. Okay. And hearing protection, the most important thing.
Now this is a very sharp blade, so we can go nice and slow. Make sure there's nothing metal. So you see that badge there. We're going to avoid that. So we'll check it. See if it's going to hit it. And we will just miss it. Now sometimes with drums that are wrapped, that'll splinter a little. But it also helps keep the shell clean. So a wrap drum is actually better to cut. It's like uh, if it's not wrapped in plastic, you can put some tape on there, some masking tape or duct tape, and that'll keep it from splintering. And what you're going to do is just get it in there, get it started, and just slowly roll it. I forgot to tell you one thing. Try to keep the blade as low as possible. So this is a little high. Okay, that will be a cleaner cut and will tend to kick less. It's going to want to kick. And there you have it. Then, of course, if you wanted to make a snare drum out of this, you'd go in there and do your bearing edges with a router. And that works really fine. Okay? You put it first on a piece of sandpaper and do that, a big piece of sandpaper, and then route that out. So that's a six and a half. And now we'll do the five and a half. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to leave this because I have a deep 7 inch drum that I want to hammer a couple dents out of an old, old Ludwig, Super Ludwig. And uh, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave this for now. And I think this will work for the 5. We'll just stick it in there and it'll be fine. So that's what we'll do. But you see how I cut that. You see how I went really, really slow. And at the end of the cut, when you see it, you'll look through it, you'll just pull it up so it doesn't kick. It wants a kick uh, because there's nothing to keep it from moving. You have to press against the fence and move this way. All right, so we'll go back to the studio after I clean up and we'll finish up. Okay, we're back in the studio and I'm going to show you how to do this. We'll start with this part because it's longer. And if that doesn't work well, we can use this part. So you see, I cut two different ways of doing it. That dent is pretty wide, almost the whole drum. So that would probably be, you know, almost, probably four to four and a half inches of damage. So what we're going to do is clamp that here. And you want to use these uh, quick grip, grip clamps. Uh, you can get a version of this to Harbor Freight cheap. These are the Irwin ones. And just clamp that in there. And I'm going to move around here so it's easier. Okay, I'm probably blocking that camera. but Alright, and then you take this other one and you'll do that very gently. Okay, and you might have to maneuver around a little. I'm going to do that to get it to to lay well. And actually we're going to start like that first. Now in this case, let's take a look at this damage again. So you see that indentation and it starts pretty much right above that 
snare bed. So I'm going to start there and then we'll move it up. I can stick something under that, like a, I don't know, something to raise it up. I'll figure that out in a minute. Now for every drum, this is going to be different. Because the dents are different, the size of the drum is different. And you just clamp this enough to hold it in place while you use the big, the big clamp. So this other piece that I cut out can also be used on this side if you want. I've done that a few times. And that is a little more precarious, but at least you're not going metal on metal. These are the clamps I use. So hopefully you can see that. And to blunt the blow of the metal on metal, I just use these water bottle caps and I put them right on that part of the clamp Okay, as we get it closer. So I'll show you. And these are old, very heavy duty clamps. I use these when I'm cutting things outside and I need to clamp things onto a sawhorse. So we'll show you what it looks like. And um, this is very important. I should say this. Always work from the outside of the dent inwards. So in other words, don't start in and work out. It's not going to be perfect, probably ever, but uh, we'll get close. And then you put the bottle cap in, and then you start clamping slowly on the outside and it is moving and you can create quite a bit of torque there because remember now we have this wood on this side so it's going to be okay and yes it is definitely moving and the wood on the outside keeps it from getting too far out and it's very soft now at this point you can take this off because it's on there. Leave this one on and now you have room to work. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll release it. I'm not applying too much pressure and then I'll move over just a little towards the middle. And this is the bad one. I'm going to torque this pretty tight. And it's, hopefully you can see that move. It's taking that dent right out very easily. The main thing is when you cut that thing on the bandsaw that it's really round because it's your outer part that's going to determine how good you get this. And then you release it. Hopefully it won't pop back, which it didn't. So you see there, that's a huge improvement. And then what you're going to do is do it again now on this side. Now don't expect it to conform to the 2x4 when you first put it on, because remember, it's dented. So as long as you're true to the bandsaw cut, you'll be okay. I could probably do metal on metal, but I like to use these bottle caps. It's a pain in the neck. but Or you can just use some pieces of rubber or anything, really. Okay, now we're doing the other far side of the, the bad dent, and we're going to get this. And that's moved as well and at some point you can take everything off and just inspect your work I'm going to do under that big hole and that moved so you see how it goes it's no big deal really it's pretty much common sense all right so let's take a look and see what we got Oh yeah, way better. If you look from the side, now it's perfectly flat. Okay, a few little things, but this is way better than hammering it out. I see a bad dent here. I'm going to take this out now. If you hammer it out, you're, you're more likely to get certain spots that are dented. If you use the clamp and the wood method, it's much more smooth. I've learned this the hard way. I'm going to show you the other method in a minute with the sand bag and a hammer. But we're not going to hammer too much on this drum because it's coming out so good. So I'm going to do this now. I'm just going to get this dent. See this small dent out? I'm going to show you how I do this. I'm going to put a piece of something under there. Something higher. 
There we go. And I'm going to aim right for this dent here. I see it. And we'll hold this on here. Again, not tight. You do not want to mess up this part of the shell. And once I get this clamp on, I'm going to take that off. So you're always juggling these two things. You know what? I'll use this one. Okay. Now for this one, I am going not going to use the, the bottle cap, the water bottle cap, because it's a bad dent. <clears throat> All right, I think we got it. Uh, no, we did not. No more. There we go. I felt it. Okay. All right, looks like it's done. Better, still a little bit there. That might be one you can take a little bit of a ball peen hammer to. Uh, we're going to try it one more time. And I may cut cut the um, video here because this is going on and on. Let's clamp this again. All right, let's try it again. Again, once you get this regular clamp on, you can take the other one off. There we go. And move it just a little. Oops. That's what you don't want. Probably not the best thing to put under here. Let's try this. I should have. Okay. There it is. Yeah, good. Much better. Just a little bit of dent. Now you won't even see that with the strainer on there. Should have thought of that, but <laughs> but yeah, this is completely fixed now. Great. All right, so what we're going to do is show you the other method. And uh, I'm going to get some sand, and we'll put the cameras back on in a second. Okay, so this is method two, and this is the method I used to use before the clamping method. And this is the one that Jack told me about that he used. But uh, over the years, I've just found it's, first of all, it's messy because you've got sand. And the clamping method normally works perfectly. The only issue is you have to make these templates, okay? Um, or cut a wooden drum up and use part of that on the outside. So I'll show you this though, just so you know, you might want to try it. So I, I have a sandbag here. Now everybody knows about sand, it gets everywhere. If you live down the beach, it's, it's, it's you know, your nemesis. And you want to just get a heavy Ziploc bag so it doesn't get punctured which is a pain in the neck if that happens. And then I just use a Ziploc bag, so then I put some um, gaffer's tape on that. And then you're going to get a shell that's bigger. This is what we cut out in the shop earlier. So this is a 16-inch shell, all right? And this is a 14-inch snare drum. And then what we do is just take the sand might be a 15 inch shell actually it feels pretty tight I didn't measure it but anyway you put it in there okay and that cushions the blow when you use a hammer that's really important because otherwise you're denting out the back of the drum and you can just take this heavy rubber mallet and whack out the um, you know the indentation okay the dent so your mileage may vary with that I've gotten much much better of results from this whole clamping thing that I do. But that is the other way to do it if you're curious about doing that. All right, so what we're gonna do now is, um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, I have a few more dents that I saw after we turn off the cameras here. I don't know if you can see that. And I'm gonna take these out. They're, around, they're on the other end with the, um, the other part of the strainer, the butt, you know, these shells, again, are so fragile that anything that 
presses up against that is liable to, to damage it. So I'm going to take those out, and then this one's looking great. See, that's the dent there that we had. It's pretty much flat. I might do a little more work on that, but I think we're in pretty good shape. So I'll show you the drum again once I got it all together, and maybe I'll do another video where I play it. All right, so we'll see you.